appreciate it. I very appreciate all what you are talking about it. Good day and good day to us, the viewers of our free media. Thank you. Thank you, Afri. Two views on the continent. It is uh, the 28th of September 2022. 77 view and general assembly. African leaders call for reform of UN agencies to tackle current demands. After a week of discussions on member states' priorities, challenges, and impacts, the high level portion of the 77th session of the UN General Assembly concluded on Monday, September 26, though with higher expectations from African heads of state. Convened Tuesday, September 20, under the theme A, Water a Watershed Moment Transformative Solutions to Interlocking Challenges. African leaders addressed various worries and called for the reform of the United Nations agencies that are capable of tackling current demands and in current time. Talking of interlocking challenges, the African leaders pointed out the devastating impact of the climate change, political crisis, the, the Russia-Ukraine war, price instability across Africa and the world, food insecurity and high energy cost. The quest for the long-awaited permanent seat at the United Nations Security Council is also the unfair multilateral system that the continent has been battling with, prompting Africans to think that the continent isn't given much consideration at the level of the United Nations while portraying weaknesses of the international organ in solving African problems. This is Views on the Continent, ladies and gentlemen. Stay with us and share your views on the program. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Once more, a pleasure having you tuned to your Pan African television to follow on your program interactive program views on the continent after the 77th u.n general assembly ended on monday 26th the world and africans in particular questioning the essence of the 77th edition that gathered over 190 heads of states and participants from across the world african leaders court for particular uh, issues calling for the reform of united nations agencies that will be able and capable to tackle demands at an immediate effect this was in regards or with regards to the various problems that are hitting the continent at large uh, citing particularly uh, uh, issues of climate change political crisis uh, we have equally price uh, instabilities food insecurity the russia ukraine war of course which is uh, uh, affecting most countries not only africa and uh, the high energy cost which is leaving many countries at the, at the moment uh, in blackout particularly South Africa and the cost of uh, energy which is very high and not enabling Africans to meet up with the cost of living ladies and gentlemen this is an interactive program we will be gone till uh, uh, 15 hours uh, GMT stay with us and share your views as I am joined this afternoon with uh, two guests in the studio is Dr. Ambi Valentine Ngwa a political and economic consultant thanks for joining me Good afternoon, viewers of Afro Media. Welcome to today's views of the continent. Of the continent, we are so excited to be here today again to discuss the 77th UN General Assembly that just held recently, and um, the takes of the African presidents is going to be our focus. Thank you very much, Dr. Ambe Valentine. We equally have uh, joining us via video link, Mr. Ekane Priestley. He is an international relations uh, uh, analyst and expert. Thanks for being with me this afternoon, Mr. Priestley. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be on the same panel once more with uh, Dr. Ambe Ngwa to discuss um, our uh, issues pertaining to the just and that uh, United Nations General Assembly and the stakes involved, especially from an African perspective. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Presley Akane, for honoring this invitation once again. Dear televiewers, it's going to be interactive and very interesting. Stay with us as I begin with you, Mr. Presley. Uh, the, the 77th edition of uh, the United Nations General Assembly came to an end. Various uh, African countries, various leaders and countries uh, uh, had... Uh, their challenges, uh, their priorities, and, and the, the, the impacts that they had to put forward. Many countries talked about many different things, but this afternoon we are focusing on what caught the attention of African leaders. So, uh, having followed the 77th UN General Assembly, what's your take, first of all, before we get deep into what was the priority of our African leaders? Oh, thank you. Uh once more uh, for having me on African media this afternoon. Um, the, the just ended uh, United Nations General Assembly. Um, it's a follow up of, uh, of the many other general debates that have been in the in the national in the in the United Nations hemicycle. And uh, once more, the stakes were square on the table and uh, leaders from uh, across the world um, had to um, make their voices heard on the burning issues, uh, burning global issues, and uh, Africa was not left out. Um, particularly, we, we, we noticed the high uh, quest for uh, more, um, a more of a more of a project of an African projecting voice within the United Nations General Assembly and uh, the enduring call for Africa to have a, a, a greater say in uh, the, the uh, decision-making um, uh, bodies or the inner chambers of the United Nations. Uh, that would be the, the United Nations Security Council, for example. And um, that, again, it's a concern that has been uh, enduring for many years. And, uh, um, and I would say, as the previous uh, general meetings, uh, it ended in um, it ended with uh, with little or no hope for as as far as that that uh, consideration is concerned. And of course, uh, other issues are relating to climate change, to food insufficiency, and to violence and violence and other eels plaguing the continent but of course uh, it was not just a stage for african leaders they equally talked about uh, issues uh, global issues uh, in particular the the current um uh, uh russo ukrainian war and uh um the 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 adverse consequences he had on uh, on the world so there were there were there were a plethora of topics on the table and uh Africans, as uh, all the leaders of the world, made their voices heard. But what is most important is uh, is uh, is the call for a greater voice within uh, a greater African voice within the United Nations uh, uh, General Assembly. Thank you for uh, that take. Now, Dr. Ambe, the African heads of states said. Uh, actually left the 77th General Assembly with higher expectations than what they were having, citing while following uh, uh, the theme of this year, which said a watershed, which was dubbed a watershed moment, transformative solutions to interlocking challenges. And uh, there were various interlocking challenges, which various and many of uh, the, the participating countries saw and which our African leaders pointed out. So what can you say about the various interlocking challenges which were pointed out by these various African leaders? Yeah, thank you. Um, first of all, to appreciate Mr. Ikana. It's been long, we've not met on the platform. <laughs> <laughs> nice meeting you today, brother. But yes, the 77 UN General Assembly that uh, finished on Monday mm -hmm. this week is one of the, I would say the best ever as compared to 1975 when Idi Amin Dada addressed the UN General Assembly, pointing some very strategic things that had to do with the continent Africa. Since then, it's like most of the African leaders went to sleep. <laughs> they will go there and read long, long speeches and then explain things that do not matter about the continent Africa. 
But this time around, we saw Lazarus Chakwera, the president of Malawi, insisting that they should not come. It was like more of a command that they should not come to the next uh, UN General Assembly without Africa having at least two permanent seats in the U.S. Security Council and at least seven other seats which are not in the U.S. Security Council. Mm -hmm. I think that is a clarion call and it's a very serious demand that has been uh, placed for so many years that most African presidents when they go to the United Nations, they shy away to bring out these things. I even saw somebody cut a part of that speech and said, this guy is joking with the United Nations. <laughs> He's joking with the United Nations. But for how long, for how long shall we continue to act as babies? 195, 190 nations gathered mm -hmm. together, 76 presidents, about 48 uh, head of government, head of three vice, four vice presidents, and other five head of delegations that came and addressed the president, the person that chaired that General Assembly is Sabakorosi. Sabakorosi said it's time for them to work in unity, work more as a united team. My problem is we can't work more as a united team in the United Nations when some people are considered as less privileged. Others are considered as people who are not competent enough to manage issues. I think the UN will become the UN when Africa is given a place in the UN Security Council. And I think the two seats demanded by the Malawian president is a very serious uh, issue that most of the African presidents are supposed to press across the, the, the board. The next thing that actually caught my attention was the address of the Malian Prime Minister, Abdullah Maida, who was bold enough to address the manipulation of the French in mm. Africa and came back with a hero welcome at Bamako Airport by the Malians. Mm. And we were so excited to see that Africans are not bold enough to know that they have to speak on behalf of their people and to speak on behalf of the continent. These two persons, I call them the heroes of this particular 77 UN General Assembly as far as Africa is concerned because we are talking about the take of the African head of state. Others are talking about the year war in Ukraine, the climate condition and political crisis. Mm -hmm. The UN authorities know very well that they have all it takes to curb the crisis in Africa. But why are they that slow? Because nobody is wanting to touch another person's interest. Where France is flogging its protégés, US will not talk anything. They will only make long, long speeches we condemn, we reject, we bind, we uproot, we cast as if they are casting demons. That doesn't make any sense because to the best of my understanding, there are really interlocking challenges in Africa and other parts of the world. But I think we are dealing with the case of Africa. As an African, I want to pay attention to what is happening in Africa, not what happened in Middle East, Asia, or Europe, or America. Mm -hmm. uh, some of our African head of state or ministers who went there to represent their head of state spoke about that there should be a ceasefire in Ukraine while their own countries are in a boiling pot. How can somebody that has not removed the peg in his eyes, he wants to remove the lock or wood that is in somebody's eyes. African head of state should be ashamed to go and be talking that there should be a ceasefire in Ukraine where fire is still burning in Cameroon. Guns are still smoking in other parts of the continent and they have not yet addressed those issues. They will tell you how everything is under control in their country. They will tell you how they appreciate what has been done so far, and they are asking for a ceasefire in Ukraine, and they are willing to work along with the authorities to make sure that there is a ceasefire in Ukraine. I was wishing to find an American president to say, why is it that since Russia attacked Ukraine, Europe has been supporting? You will hear that firefighters are sent, and bombs, and missiles, and grenades, are being sent and tankers are sent from Germany, they are sent from England, they are sent from Spain to support Ukraine. Whoever or what have they, why haven't they sent some of those their mighty weapons to help break down the crisis in Africa? That is what we are supposed to be, those are the things we are supposed to be addressing. And I think, to the best of my understanding, these two presidents, Abdullahi Maidia, who is the, vice, the Prime Minister of Mali, mm -hmm. and Lazarus Chakwera, were my heroes as far as the UN 77 General Assembly was concerned. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Dr. Ambe. Now, uh, uh, Mr. Ikaneb, Dr. Ambe talked about various uh, challenges which to him, uh, 
maybe other African countries were not supposed to pay attention to the Ukraine, the Russia-Ukraine war. However, we see that the world is being impacted by this Russia-Ukraine war. Do you equally buy the idea that uh, trying to meddle to call for a ceasefire in the Russia-Ukraine war is trying to remove the lock in another person's eye, whereas you equally have the lock in your own eyes, which have not been removed with regards to the, the, the conflicts that the African countries are also facing? Oh, thanks. I, I, take, I take a lot of delight uh, to listen to Dr. Ambe. He comes with, he comes with her. He always comes up, up with her Pan-Africanist energy, and that's really nice. Um, uh, yeah, but uh, I think uh, the United Nations General Assembly is um, is the biggest diplomatic concert. We should not stray from that truth. It's the biggest diplomatic concert. Uh, and it's the biggest platform of diplomatic expression. So when you call leaders from over 190 countries, you're not expecting um, a discourse, a discourse that is limited to uh, national sovereignties and territorial limitations. We are, to, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are on that concert to discuss global issues, to discuss, to discuss the reshaping or the shaping of, of um, of the world. So it's only legitimate that a, a president or a statesman from Africa, or from the East, uh, uh, Middle East, would be concerned about what is happening in, in Russia or in Ukraine. Because whatever, because there's, the, the, there's what we call in international relations the spillover effect. So what is happening in Russia has a bearing in, it has a bearing in, 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 in the life of my of my of my grandparents in somewhere in, the, in, in Tombell. what is happening the food insufficiency the food insufficiency uh, we are facing now due to the war uh in ukraine has a bearing on someone living in bafut so we cannot say that um leaders of africa uh had because they are facing their own woes at home do not have uh, a legitimate voice to to discuss issues going on in Ukraine, that would be that would be a uh, that would be really that would really be that would be really Afrocentric in the in the stricter sense of of it. Um, now, I buy with Ms. Nambe that uh, we have our own realities in Africa, and uh, we should uh, maybe pay more attention in, in what is happening on our backyards. But I think uh, several leaders of the continent projected their voices and uh, uh, they were concerned about uh, what uh, goes on uh, in right right uh, in our backyards we had for example the the, the minister of foreign affairs of cameroon Lejeune Benabila, who talked about um the climate challenges in on the continent and he he squarely addressed the or squarely um uh intimated that um insufficiency and lack of political will were the reasons why uh, there is still are uh, there is still a, a blockade in finding solutions regarding climate change he talked about being a, he talked about the uh, dr congo being the environmental lung of the world so this i think taking um he he, he talked about the central africa as uh, as a uh, uh, that as a country facing a great uh, level of food insufficiency, I think it, it's a platform to 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 discuss everything and whatever plagues the world as from from Africa or from the Middle East. And I think the African leaders um, um, have their say on this global or global plat uh, platform, and they did what they could. Uh, the question is. Uh, once more is what comes out of this of this uh, gentleman talk because the the united nations general except general assemblies have been succeeding each other but uh i think and again i agree with mr with dr ambe about having um uh, an african um projecting voice within that circle um uh, with especially regarding the United Nations uh, Security Council. Uh, we we 
we open our eyes and see what happens from from the just ended discussions. But I think uh, the African leaders um, did not go there to be hand clappers as as uh, it's been the case in many years back. And uh, and again, I want to quote uh, Minister Bella Bella who who talked about. Um, who talked about the need for um, um, uh, the need for uh, uh, more commitment, like more commitment to climate change, and uh, uh, they talked about the Green Sahel Initiative and talked about the refugee crisis, the, the, the refugee crisis and asylum seekers, and I think about five hundred thousand asylum seekers in Cameroon. These are these are. These are realities on the on the continent, and uh, having to address it on a platform or on a stage, on a global stage as the United Nations, I think it's quite a laudable initiative. Thank you, uh, Mr. Priestley Kade. Let me just stay with you. You made emphases and clarifications about the essence of uh, the United Nations ground being a, a platform to enable uh, countries representatives to air out the, 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 the problems which they are facing and the problems which the world is facing, which is affecting one another. Now, many have uh, been uh, uh, applauding the, 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 the speech of uh, uh, Mali's uh, uh, Prime Minister Abdullah Maiga, while others don't think the, the depth of his speech was worth it. So how can you analyze particularly the speech of uh, a uh, Prime Minister Abdullah Maiga of Mali where he had to lash out on the United Nations Secretary General, lash out on uh, Niger's uh, President, lash out on Cote d'Ivoire's President, and uh, lashing out on everybody, lashing out on the ECOWAS. So how can, why, why do you equally uh, heal his speech or do you condemn it in a way? speech as uh, if, if you would ask me I would say his speech was just a, um, a, a very daring one a very daring one and uh, maybe filled with truth maybe filled with essence but um, I more I would like species that are consequential I would like Africans to project their voices in a consequential way meaning it's not enough to to tell our Western leaders uh, the truth in their faces. It's enough to have the tools, the tools to project a certain truth. So um, you could say whatever, you could say the truth's inherent in their management or in the governance within the United Nations. You could say that the, you could talk about the truths uh, when it comes to um, uh, the, the the, the, the governing differences within African uh, within the African political sphere or or within multilateral and um, multilateral organizations like the United Nations, but if we I am I think the the purpose today is not for Africans to to always uh, uh, position themselves as some emotional beings or some cry babies. Uh, the United Nations or the Western powers uh, uh, do not do not have uh, the, the do not have the role or do not have the command button in fixing the real in fixing our national realities. There is there is um there is a, a project the project on which the United Nations today lies, like the the seventeen uh, sustain, sustainable development goals. We have their, their clamping down on poverty. We have zero hunger. We have good health and well-being. We have quality education. We have gender equality. We have clean water and sanitation, um, and so and so forth. I, I don't think um, the, the the cholera situation, as it, as as it is in many countries today, is uh, is a cause in many countries in Africa today. It's a cause directly linked to the world uh, to to the West. I don't think um, gender inequality, as we as we experience in Africa today, is is the making of the West. I don't think uh, the 
the, 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 the silencing dissent and attacking civil societies and are uh, attacking uh, linguistic minorities and uh, ethnic minorities as we face in many parts of Africa today are the making of the West. So we, we cannot keep always shooting at the West in, in our own uh, historical evolution. If we don't take conscience of, uh, conscience of who we are, then we are certainly not ready to start. Because I, 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 I like to say that we are, most of the African countries today are a false start because they dwell, we dwell so much. We don't take, we don't take concerts like, or platforms like the United Nations to, to cry. We're in the 21st century, it's not a world of tears. It's a world of action. It's a world of strategies. It's a world of development. It's a world of, you know, you, it's, it's a world of input. So if you can, if we cannot hold our leaders accountable, if we cannot um, put in place structures or governing structures that will lead to a positive development, if we cannot, if we keep on silencing dissent, if we keep on um, uh, denying ac accountability and and having leaders who would stay, uh, who would walk on crutches yet remain on power, uh, yet remain in power who would endure in power for 40 years with a low uh, approval rate and keep getting keep getting reelected in office then we do not have to we do not need a platform like the united nations to go cry in there now for certain for certain global inequalities like like when, if we have to talk about climate change and pollution and immigration of course then we have a platform to talk to 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 to, to address these causes and engage the the, the 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 West not not on terms of not on terms of weaknesses but engage the world engage the West in um in 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 terms of mutual respect and in terms of mutual engagement we 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 a child of Africa that we with everything we have you will not ask her or the people of Africa today to constantly to constantly use platforms. Because if you are not developed, if you don't have the tools for your own growth, you don't use uh, you don't use uh, the United Nations platform or other platforms to directly shoot at people thousands of miles away. Because it, it's it's just like talking for two hours and afterwards nothing happens. Because now, as a team, we are clamoring for two seats, at least two seats in the United Nations Security Council. That is it. But what are the tools we put in place in order to uh, gain those two seats. If we have a uh, an internet, if we have a diplomatic body as the African Union walking on crutches, and then you 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 without any projecting voice, and then you go to the United Nations and and you hit your hand on the table, you say Africa deserves a place because there are 191 places. You don't you don't deserve a place in the Security Council when you have a when you have an unprofessional military. You don't deserve a place in the Security Council when your economic your economy is lame. You don't deserve a place in the Security Council when you keep violating the rights of women. You don't deserve a place in the Security Council when constantly you 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 cheat on election on electoral practices and stay in power for forty years and fifty years. You don't deserve a place in that Security Council. It is not a given. It's it is taken. Thank you, Mr. Presley Kane. Dr. Ambivalent, I, Mr. Priestley has put out, uh, Mr. Priestley has put out some facts which I would like us to 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 to, to continue debating on. He says uh, people, uh, countries do not deserve a seat in the a permanent seat in the United Nations Security Council if they don't have a strong economy, if they keep violating uh, uh, women's rights, and uh, a couple of other things he cited. Do the countries which are presently permanent uh, uh, UN Security Council countries, do they have, do they fulfill all the requirements which uh, uh, Mr. Priestley cited? And also, do you think, or, or are you of the same uh, uh, opinion that African states are not yet ready to own a permanent seat at the UN Security Council? Mm -hmm. That's a bit of my fear when I hear an African speak like that. It is true, uh, Mr. Ikane has cited some very important points, but I beg to disagree with him, not every African state. 
It's weak in, in, in those domains. Uh, it's weak in, in those, those domains, things. Yeah. We are looking for two seats, not 54 seats. <laughs> there are 54 nations in the continent of Africa. We need just two. <laughs> Select the two among the four that are reasonable and give them. That thing is a privilege to the continent Africa. We are not going to select 66 and 54 people and put mm -hmm. in just two seats. And you cannot tell me that all the 54 nations in Africa, they don't have are human rights. They change. don't have strong economy. They don't have integrity. Botswana is a country with strong economy. Mauritius with a strong economy. South Africa with a strong economy. Egypt with a strong economy. And we can name and keep naming. And those countries, you will not hear some kind of atrocities being committed in Botswana. Botswana has been very calm, serene. Everything has been in order. Botswana is one of the countries that is enjoying some of the privileges that Europeans enjoy. The country, Botswana, their passport gives them access to about 50 countries in the world, including Germany and America. That's let you understand that they are of a certain portfolio in the society because a country cannot be given such a privilege to use only its passport and penetrate a place like Germany and other parts of the country of the world if it does not have a particular standard. South Africa is a standard. It's also raised by white people, white people in South Africa. So we cannot say that African countries, presidents stay for, for 50 years. Kenya has a record to have conducted one of the best elections in history. Recently when William Samoy Arab Oruto became president of Kenya recently and he held his fair cabinet meeting this Monday in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the state house. So we are trying to see that in years past, the democracy of Africa is evolving and things are getting better. They should not look at Africa today as Africa 60 years ago. ago. Africa is not what it used to be 60 years ago. It is true, uh, Federal Lecture in 1986, Africans are not strong enough to govern themselves. If you give them gun, they will kill everyone. You give them power, they will manipulate everyone. You give them money, they will embezzle it. You give them governance, they will use it to dominate and subjugate people. That was 1986. 1986 to today is so many years past. And I think from that time till now, Africa has become better. The best elections came out in Kenya. We have such a record. Egypt is a country that is stable also right now. Botswana, Mauritius, and other countries in Africa have very good leadership and excellent leadership. Look at what has happened in Tanzania through Magufuli. Makagame has kept peace and serenity since the war, the genocide in Rwanda. Rwanda many years ago. Things have been calm. And there's economic, political, technological, as well as other developments in Rwanda. So you cannot tell me that all the 54 countries in Africa, they are having uh, human rights abuse, presidents stay in power, they are on a wheelchair. No, we need just two seats. And coming back to some of the things that he mentioned about African presidents staying in power. African presidents don't stay in power because they want to stay in power. Mm -hmm. These same people who are sitting over there are the ones influencing the state of African presidents in power. Because you don't explain that a country is protesting in the street against a president in office. Elections are conducted, the same president wins. How do you explain that a man like Furi Nasingbe, about 4 million Togolese, entered the street of Lume, marching the streets and protesting that they don't want him anymore as president. And then suddenly, elections are conducted. The and same person that was not accepted by the people won the elections. By what means? Electoral process in Africa they are very poor. Why is it that these people who are outside there do not allow the electoral machineries they use in their countries to conduct elections to be used here? If they conduct elections in America, elections results come out the same day. And even he says corruption. The American election is more corrupted than any other election in the world. America is a member of the UN Security Council. That doesn't make them perfect. Mm -hmm. America right now is influencing the war in Ukraine. Is that integrity? Because instead of trying to broker a peace between Ukraine and Russia, they are there sponsoring Stop arms right. oh. and empowering Ukraine to fight against Russia. How civil are these people? How, how serene are they? So they are definitely sick of the things that we are sick of. You know that what they are well has covered their sickness. They are sick of it in a modern way. <laughs> yes, in a modern way. You can be sick and the level of your health covers the sickness that you have inside you. America has a level of health that has covered the sickness. So that doesn't mean they are not sick. They are sick. A man who has rashes on his body and he covers it with a gown doesn't mean that he's, he's not, not sick. sick. He's okay. sick, but the gown is covering something <laughs> underneath. So all those nations are not there because they are competent, they are wonderful, they are excellent. No. How do you explain that? France is a third reserve of gold in the world, and France does not have a single gold mine. 
why Mali has about 560 gold mines in the world, yet Mali is nowhere to be found. So it is important for us to understand that as much as we are trying to blame the African leaders for their bad leadership, which I have pointed in many occasions, mm -hmm. we are seeking a counter leadership because you will not tell me that it was the white or the West that came and caused the president to steal 96 billion. Before Hastin Kamosu Banda of Malawi died, he had $300 billion in his account. Was it the West that told him to steal the money? It wasn't the West that told him to steal the money. The, 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 the Zambian government sold the copper mines to an American company. Was it the Americans who told him to sell? It wasn't him that told him to sell. So the issue is we have bad leadership, but we cannot just hang on the place of bad leadership. Most of the bad leaders we have in Africa are puppets produced, fabricated, and sent back to us in this continent by the same people in the West. Britain has been for 1,000 years without a civil war. That's because they have a system that is stronger than, than individuals. But in Africa, we have individuals that are stronger than the system. So I think we have a challenge in leadership. But to tell me that almost every African country is not competent enough to sit at the UN Security Council, I beg to disagree with my brother on that. We have countries in Africa like Mauritius, no matter how small they are, they have proven their worth to be an effective and stable economy. We have Botswana, we have South Africa, we have Egypt, which are all coming up. So they should not give us this impression that 54 countries in Africa, nobody is qualified enough. As a matter of fact, a lot of these brouhahas in Africa are found in former French colonies, from the Côte d'Ivoire to the Senegal to the Niger to the Burkina Faso to Cameroon to Gabon to Central African Republic. That's where you find all these brouhahas because France is facing problems. Look at a place like Britain. The British rose up and said they don't want Boris Johnson anymore. Mm -hmm. Boris Johnson stepped down. The French are pressing that Macron should leave. Macron will leave. Mm -hmm. But in Cameroon, in Ghana, in South Africa, in Germany, in, in, in Uganda, if they say Museveni go, more people will die. Museveni will stay. If they say foreign assembly will go out of October, people will die. Foreign assembly will stay. We have Ali Bongo in Gabon, who is even crawling on crutches, yet he is still ruling the country. How do you explain that the people who are supposed to be the one to vote you into power, they don't want you yet to win election? Is it ghosts, insects, animals, domestic and wild? or some aliens that gathered at the electoral centers to vote this same president that the masses have refused to acknowledge as president. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, now, so what do you think is actually keeping the UN from putting at least two African countries? At, the at United the Nations is people's business that they are doing. They have assembled a lot of persons to just be as hand clappers. Those five UN powers, Britain, France, America, Russia, and China mm -hmm. are the people that call the shots in the world. And they sit there and make their decisions and will not allow any other person. They are considering Africa as a place where we are not much developed enough. It's Africa that developed in terms of slavery mm -hmm. and still gives the raw materials where they are building the economy. So if at all we want to go on a scale and balance, he will give the raw material and he who processes it, supposed to be on the same place, on the same place. But why is it that those of us who are giving, let's consider that we have not processed it, mm -hmm. we give the raw materials. If we are not there, they cannot exist. Mm -hmm. And if they are not there, we cannot exist. So that's the balance. We strike a balance. So I don't see the reason why they are saying that Africa is not competent enough to produce two seats. Two seats, oh, Rita, out of 54 countries with 1.3 billion people. Are you telling me that in the midst of 1.3 billion people, we don't have up to two persons who are qualified to go and also sit with China? The Chinese people are here, very stupid people. I'm sorry to say that. In this Africa, they, are, they have a lot of disadvantages and errors. Britain has its own there. Uh, France has their own problems. America has a bunch of problems, yet they're the ones in the Security Council. How does America or France or Britain or China or Russia, Russia has caused world destability. Is that a qualification to sit in the Security Council? What is it securing there where he has brought war everywhere? He has, he's killing people in Ukraine and has caused Spain to go to war, Germany to go to war, America to go to war. They are fighting a war behind Ukraine. How does that make Russia a member of the Security Council? How civil is Russia? How well behaved is Russia than Botswana? How well behaved is Russia than Egypt? How organized is Russia than South Africa? How comfortable is Russia than even Uganda when they are the one perpetrating war in the whole of Europe? So you don't tell me that they are sitting in the Security Council because they are holier than that. All of them are sick. All of them, all of them in the Security Council are sick. So you cannot tell other those who are in the Security Council are well. If they are sick, Africa is sick. 
they should add more sick people in the security council because all everybody who is in the security council is sick. He's sick. People are sick. Thank you, Dr. Abbe. <laughs> so we have sick people in the security council. All of them are sick. So they should just add more sick people, just at least two uh, from the 54 uh, sick people, sick uh, countries in uh, Africa. So we can join also the table of five to make a seven, seven, sick, people. seven sick people that yes. are going to have a veto power in uh, the United Nations Security Council. Now, uh, Mr. Uh, Ekane Presley, we are, we are talking now of uh, trying to look at some who, who think they might be more uh, perfect or more in a well-being state than others. That brings me to remember what Kenyan President uh, William Ruto said at the assembly. He said uh, more powerful uh, countries are the ones uh, committing more or contributing more in the climate uh, 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 climate pollution, therefore climate change, whereas the weaker countries and African countries and developing countries are those suffering more. And he cited Kenya because uh, charity will always begin at home. Kenya is one of the countries that are suffering from serious drought, devastating drought, and you know most of those countries, uh, the, the, the feed on agriculture, the feed on cultivation, all of these now are the impacts of this climate change, which are more uh, uh, perpetrated by these uh, developed countries and are more the countries that are feeling more of the impact are the developing countries at this level how do you think uh, these countries need to go about it because we remember climate change uh, impacts are one of the problems that most african uh, leaders cited and pointed out and even the u.n secretary general pointed out even the president of the u.n assembly this time pointed out the climate change and its impact on most of the countries how do you think countries need to go about to secure or to prevent more impact and devastating effects of the climate change? Um, thank you once more. Um, first, I would like to um, input a, a, a correction from my former, <laughs> from my former um, uh, statement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, my former contribution. I think uh, once more, uh, Dr. Ngwa got me and he didn't get me in a way. I wasn't at any point uh, discrediting discrediting the African power or the African um, uh, uh, the African the African ability to join the United Nations Security Council. I was uh, I was I raised certain points as the basis as the basis of a shared voice to get to, to gain access within the Security Council. So my point was, uh, if we as a people cannot address the points I raised, the points, the, the various points, corruption, the economy and everything, uh, we cannot go, I think the, 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 the Security Council for me, is, the access to the Security Council for me is like an end point. And I said, we need, our, we need a, a common voice, we need shared values around uh, a diplomatic platform that we have in Africa, which is the African Union. Uh, if we cannot strengthen that body, which is our which is our diplomatic voice on the continent, then we will not even be able to produce two uh, countries or two states worthy of representing or of being the voice of Africa in the platform like the United Nations Security Council. So it wasn't about saying that. I wasn't saying that Africa um, is too lame or so unready to join uh, that kind of club. And of course, the, the many examples, uh, 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 the many savvy examples Dr. Ngwa gave were, were quite salient and very true. I agree with him. Um, now, coming back to the question uh, you just asked, regarding uh, the the climate change and uh, and the and how africa um uh, how africa is a victim to this um to the climate change i would say that um of course like the president of the newly elected president of kenya and other other african leaders like the cameroon's uh, foreign the uh, minister of foreign affairs um uh, stated I think it's of 
it's a whole problem of uh, selfishness and political will because uh, if there is a continent uh, suffering most from climate change today is the African continent. And sadly enough, is the continent that pollutes less. So it is uh, a little bit, there is, it's, it's quite a discrepancy and it's, it's quite disturbing to know that uh, the biggest pollutants, the biggest pollutants, the, the, this industrialized world um, are, are less engaged in the fight against climate change. They put in less money, they put in less efforts, they put in less political will uh, to save the planet that we are living in. And Africa seems to, or Africa is obviously paying uh, the greatest um, price when it comes to uh, the climate change debate. Um, in terms of, of pathfinding or solution seeking, it would be really hard because um, the the topic of the, the, the climate change the climate change debate is is met with other um, other topics as uh, security as as food insufficiency but it's obvious that uh, the question of power uh, uh, gets the spotlight and the limelight in international political discourse sadly. Um, they are more of warring factions than of uh, uh, gentlemen and women willing to shape um, the continent in in um, with 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 willing to shape the continent when it, with regards to to climate change. And um, for Africa, I think the debate about climate change leaves Africa so quite helpless. Maybe we would. Uh, uh, have to enforce or certain dynamics within our international, uh, our, our organization, the African Union, or find ways to curb this um, problem. But if we are setting our sights to the West in order to find solutions to our issues regarding drought and pollution and uh, and, 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 and global warming, I think uh, it, it would be it, it's 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 a pre it's a pretense like they, they bring it to the table all the time, but it's not the focus. It's not the focus of, the, of most of these politicians, uh, Western politicians in particular. It's the concern is more around security issues, power tussle, uh, redistribution of uh, of uh, of power cards on the table. And uh, to much to the detriment of uh, the planet we are living on, uh, I find that quite a paradox, but that's the reality. So when we see a, a succession of political leaders um, giving the impression that the climate that uh, climate uh, climate discourse is is a, is a centerpiece of 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 political discourse, when in reality. Um, uh the, the the production of more uh, weaponry and artillery as uh, are, are, are more of the essence and distributed in ukraine and, and russia and other parts of the world and people are dying in yemen and syria and in africa uh, we begin to ask ourselves uh, uh, what is important in our human um, progress Okay, let, let me get to Dr. Ambe now. Um, we've talked about our interlocking challenges and cited climate change, cited food insecurity, cited political crisis, and what have you. Food insecurity, high energy costs, uh, price instability. We mentioned earlier that most of this price instability were due to the crisis that were hitting the the productive uh oh yeah we're, we're productive nations like rush like russia like ukraine we have uh, nigeria and what have you countries which are which provide raw materials or send out do exportation 
into the world. And we find most of the times in our society nowadays, everything just increases in prices, and, and the, 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 the password is, is because of the Russia crisis. Russia, the, the, the Russia cries uh, uh, Ukraine war. How are we supposed to better handle this particular uh, uh, problem to be able to tackle price instability and food insecurity at this point in time, which is a great problem in the world, uh, particularly in Africa? If Ukraine is sick and Africa is affected, mm -hmm. then Africa is a sicker than Ukraine. Africa cannot be sick because Ukraine is sick. When did you start having headache because your neighbor had headache? Because you take care of your health. And because you take care of your health, your neighbor's sickness is not your sickness. As a matter of fact, this is not even neighbor. Things should get bad in Cameroon when things are bad in Nigeria because Nigeria is a neighbor. It's a neighbor. How is the neighborness, let me use that word, how close mm -hmm. is Ukraine to Cameroon? How close is Ukraine to Nigeria? The problem is we don't understand what we call backup. Our nations in Africa totally depend for supplies from the countries of the West because I think the predominant thing that Ukraine has that we think we're depending on was wheat. Mm. Ukraine does not supply us with other things apart from wheat. And how do you explain that Africa with a tropical climate is depending on food supplies from a country that does not have the kind of fertility and the climatic condition we have here? We have that is a problem. Beef that rice. Everything. Rice, you can name it. Oil. You granite, can name it. Everything that are cultivated Everything in Africa. Everything that in can be cultivated is in Africa. The, then a single country that has just wheat to supply the world. Mm -hmm. Not that Cameroon can even produce wheat because we had the company in the north called Sodibli. Sodibli produced wheat, wheat in the past, mm -hmm. but it was shut down. Now, why is it that the war in Ukraine is affecting the economies of Africa? because Africa has refused to build its own economy and is dependent on other economies. You will discover that the shortage of food in Africa has not affected, and the, the, the war in Ukraine has not affected almost every country in Africa. When we're increasing food stock prices in Cameroon, Kagame was reducing food stock prices in, in Rwanda. Why? That's because they have planned an economy that can be able to weather the storms of life. It is just like the biblical saying, of Joseph going in Egypt, seeing Pharaoh's dream, mm -hmm. seven years of famine and seven years of abundance. Mm -hmm. And he said, plan for seven years, harvest and stock. When the famine comes, you will not feed the pinch. That is a strategy is for every country. That you are a nation. You don't have any backup in the days of crisis. Then you are not a nation. As a matter of fact, there is supposed to be a substitute for every particular product. If wheat is used to produce flour and the war in Ukraine has caused wheat not to longer grow or possibly the production of flour has dropped, why don't we fall back in Cameroon, get similar products that can produce flour like plantain, potatoes, as well as cassava can be processed and produce flour. Mm -hmm. If we did not have such backups, it is but obvious that you are going to fail. The plane that flies in the air has two engines. Some have four engines. One of the engines is a backup. If one of the engines fails, the other one has the capacity to sustain the flight until it lands. Nobody lives on Earth without, without a backup. backup. Plan B. <laughs> there is no plan B. So it's but a shameful thing that there is a war in Ukraine and then Africa is in shambles. Africa is in lack. Africa is in pain. Africa is in difficulty. It falls back in the place of leadership. America has taught fuel that can sustain the American nation for the next 200 years. In case there is no longer fuel in Africa, American vehicles will still run smoothly because they have done enough to do a backup as far as fuel is concerned. Africans, to me, every crisis that occurs in the world is a clarion call to African leaders to get better. For instance, when the COVID-19 came, we never knew we could produce hand sanitizers. Mm -hmm. When Europe was shut up, 
we now saw that mm -hmm. we had to look within us rather than to looking bring out to the Europe. skills. So from within, <laughs> we came with hand sanitizers. Mm -hmm. Senegalese began producing test kits for COVID-19. Yes. Face mask suddenly came from nowhere. All our tellers now got knowledge to produce face mask. <laughs> That's shocking, Rita. That you know that since the advent of the COVID-19, as that tension, the fear, that euphoria was swept away, the production of those local face masks disappeared. disappeared. We have gone back to use what is produced in China and, and other countries mm -hmm. because we have been taught to believe that we have to depend on others completely. Where are those materials like what you are putting on that were used in those days? When you are driving towards Rock Point, you will see those face masks there to 250 produced by our tellers. Are those face masks lost? Have they lost their hygiene? Have they lost their purity? Have they lost their, their cleanliness? That we are insisting only to wear the ones like I'm sitting in the studio here. The face mask I'm seeing here is the one that was imported from China, sitting on that plate there. Now, why why is it that that, that sentiment disappeared? Face mask, first of all, is not designed only for COVID-19. People were using face masks, doctors, nurses, and other personnel. Mm -hmm. Those who were cleaning garbage use face masks. Why is it that our own face mask that came from African material that we sued within that period of COVID-19 has disappeared? The dependent mentality. The dependent mentality. We don't have what to back up. To me, that was a situation that would have kicked out this other imported face mask for eternity, making local uh, tell us to have a means of livelihood and also creating job opportunities for those who are around. Mm -hmm. Going back again, you, you, you see that some certain things occurred. Now we are no longer producing hand sanitizers again. We are now importing everything again from China back. Are they telling us that we are going to be living from a dependent mindset? I had the government of Cameroon has taken a giant strike recently to ask Brazilians to buy corn produced only in Cameroon to produce their beer. That's a giant stride. So we are calling on all Cameroonians to enter into intensive agriculture. And that's why we are organizing an agro-revolution seminar in Tiku, 23rd and 22nd of August, uh, of October, is 2022, is to train at least 1,000 farmers who will then write projects in different fields of operation. Mm -hmm. Because we will teach on pisciculture, which is fish farming, we will teach on pigree, we will teach on poultry, we will teach on crop cultivation. We are bringing regional delegates of agriculture in fisheries and animals or boundary and equally agriculture to come educate people. You just register with 10,000. After the training session, we ask you to write a credible project. Once your project is shortlisted, we sponsor it. We sponsor it. So the challenge we have is that people do not know how to exploit what is within them. Those test kits that were produced in Senegal, they have disappeared into thin air. What we have now is imported test kits. Imported. Are we going to use what comes from us? Only when we are in crisis that's a question that is a problem <laughs> so what you see uh, 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 africans have this dependent mentality is not something that started today i've just given you a simple anal analogy now the crisis in ukraine is another clarion call that since at, we're depending totally on ukraine for wheat to get flour now that the supplies have been blocked look within us people are started cultivating wheat in oku when the war ceases in Ukraine tomorrow, all those wheat farms will die. The cassava we have here, the plantain, the potato can produce flour, we will not exploit those things because this thing came as an eye-opener. Every world crisis has always been as an eye-opener to Africans, yet Africans have refused to open their eyes to see. I think it's time for us to get out of this cocoon of ignorance and start acting like people who have blood flowing in their bones in their veins. Mm -hmm. Not a group of persons who are just teleguided, manipulated and directed on what to do. Because this crisis in Ukraine, the COVID-19 crisis, to me, is no world disaster. It's an eye-opener to the continent Africa. And this is a time for us to boycott certain things we depend on people out of the country. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Ambi Valentine Ngoa. I'll take that as your concluding statement while trying to get a last word from you, Mr. Ekane Presley, International Relations Analyst. Just give us a last word to get out of this program. How do you think the days are going to be ahead, the days ahead are going to be for these African countries, especially uh, those who've called for a reform of these UN agencies that can be able to tackle the demands at the current moment, at the current period in time? 
um, thanks once more uh, uh, for having me. And uh, I want to applaud Ms. Dr. Wa for his input, which is um, it's quite pertinent and and uh, and uh, pregnant with uh, with a lot of truth. And uh, we going back to your question. I think um, I would say that um, uh, in pursuant uh, with uh, what uh, Dr. Wa just mentioned, I think every continent, every nation every uh, uh, governing body um, excels, excels only with a strategic plan. And it's only strategy that bequeaths power. Without strategy, there is no possibility of talking about a strong African con uh, continent. Without strategy, even if you give uh, the African continent two seats in the Security Council, we don't want uh, we don't want seats void of power. We would want seats void. Uh, we want seats uh, with influence and a voice, meaning, and that voice can only be gotten if we can start by st strengthening the organization, the, the 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 integration organization we have in Africa, which is the African Union. In that body, we must from east, south, north, and west learn to. Um, learn to project a shared voice, shared values. It's not going to be easy for sure, but then the essence, the, uh, the, the, the power, the African power would only come if we take conscience of who we are, of the journey we've been, we've been, we've, we've been through and where we are heading. And then the, the, notion, of, the notion of now, now shouldn't be, an, uh, should, shouldn't be the African prison anymore. We should we should be able to learn to build for the next generation. It is very important, and that's the only way we can engage the world with a certain kind of legitimacy, whether in economy, whether in security, whether in politics. That's the only way to project our voice with a strategy, because it's only strategy that gives power. Mr. Ekane Priestley, International Relations Analyst, thank you for your input on today's program views on the continent equally we had in the studio, Dr. Ambi Valentine Gua, uh, a political and economic consultant. And I know you have very many caskets, but I'm going to limit that, <laughs> them to that this afternoon. So, televiewers, we've come to the end of today's edition of Views on the Continent. Your one hour interactive program runs every Monday to fr one, every Tuesdays to Fridays, 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Rather, 14 hours GMT to 15 hours GMT. So, tomorrow is another edition with. Uh, Beat Ben Luis on the anchor from now. I will have to say goodbye and have a wonderful day. Afrique Media, le monde, c'est nous.